Hello and welcome to this online introduction to SDL. My name is Mihal Brumbuli and I will present you what is SDL and how to use it. SDL stands for Specification and Description Language. It is standardized by the International Telecommunication Union as Recommendations at 100 for modeling telecommunication systems. However, its application extends to complex, real-time, event-driven and interactive systems that communicate using messages. SDL can be used in combination with other languages like message sequence charts for describing interaction scenarios, abstract syntax notation 1 for describing data types, and testing and test control notation version 3 for testing. SDL is a graphical modeling language which is extremely intuitive. The most important characteristic of SDL is its formality. The semantics behind every concept are precisely defined. This allows for a model in SDL to be analyzed and interpreted without any ambiguities. SDL is a wide spectrum language that can be used for both high level and detailed modeling, from requirements to implementation. Although it is widely used in the telecommunications, SDL has also been applied to a diverse number of other areas ranging from aircraft, train control and automotive to medical and packaging systems. The language is very mature and has been evolving since the first Z100 recommendation in 1980. SDL provides structuring entities that facilitate modeling of large and complex systems. The model is based on communicating extended finite state machines with abstract data types and object-oriented features. I will now explain each of these concepts in more detail. The structuring entities of an SDL model are called agents. The system is the top-level agent. It can contain other agents, but it cannot be contained by, by any agent. Everything outside of the system is defined as the environment. Blocks are containers of agents. They are used to break down the complexity and size of systems. The system itself is a block, that is, the top-level container. Processes are bottom-level agents. They are found in blocks and cannot contain any other agent. An SDL model has a tree structure where the system is the root, blocks are the internal nodes and processes are the leaves. Communication in SDL is asynchronous and, and is described using messages or discrete signals. Messages can be defined at any level of the model, be it system or block. They have names and optional parameters and can be grouped into lists for ease of use. Messages travel in channels. The channels have names and expand through the structure connecting agents to one another or to the environment. A message path is formed by the channels connecting the source and destination of a message. The endpoint of a path must be either a process or the environment. Behavior in SDL is defined in processes using graphical finite state machines. The model of the finite state machine is that of Mili, meaning that actions take place in the transitions and not in the states. State machines can perform operations on data and communicate using messages listed at the endpoints of the channel the process is connected to. Every process in SDL has an implicit queue for messages. Messages are consumed in the order they are received, that is, first in, first out. For example, if signal 1 is on top of the queue, it will be treated first, followed by signal 2. The start symbol is the entry point of a state machine. The transition between the start symbol and the first state of the process is called the start transition. During this transition, the process cannot treat messages. All other symbols are allowed. A state is defined by its name. When in a state, the process is waiting for some event to go on. 
The event can be a message input, priority input, continuous signal or a save. The same event can generate different behavior depending on the state the process is in. For example, signal 1 may trigger the execution of either action 1 or 2 depending on whether the process is in state 1 or state 2. There can be several symbols for the same state. Events can be connected to the same state symbol or different symbols with the same state name. If the same event triggers the same behavior on different states, then these states can be grouped into the same symbol. At the end of the transition, the process goes to a next state. The symbol used for the next state is the same. A dash next state terminating a transition means that the next state is the same as the state the transition was triggered, while a star as a state means all states. Message inputs are consumed in first-in, first-out order. In the example, signal 1 will be treated first, causing the execution of action 1. As the process does not change its state after consuming the message, signal 2 is treated next, causing the execution of action 2. A star as a message input can be used for handling all unexpected messages. These are all the messages for which no transition has been defined in the current state. In some cases, it is convenient to express that reception of a message takes priority over reception of other messages. This can be expressed by means of priority input. Although signal 1 comes before signal 2 in the queue, it is signal 2 which will be treated first because of the priority. If more than one priority inputs are defined in the current state, then they are consumed in first-in, first-out order, like normal message inputs. Sometimes the situation may arise where a transition should be executed when a certain condition is fulfilled. A continuous signal is a Boolean expression. If it evaluates to true, then its associated transition is executed. The expression is evaluated only after all messages have been consumed, that is, the input queue of the process is empty. Continuous signals have priorities. The expression with the lowest priority is evaluated first. In the example, action 1 will be executed before action 2, if the value of i is between 0, 0 and 10. When a message is received while unexpected, it is thrown away. This is considered normal behavior in SDL. It is, however, possible to save messages so that they can be processed when execution reaches a new state. When a new state is reached, saved messages will be processed before normal inputs. If signal 2 was saved in state 1, then when the process goes to state 2, it will first treat this message before any other messages in the queue. As a result, action 2 will be executed before action 3. A transition performs a sequence of actions. During a transition, the data of a process may be manipulated and messages may be sent. An event marks the entry point of a transition. This event can be a message input, priority input or continuous signal. The transition will end with the next state or a stop. When a stop is reached, the process will terminate and all messages in its input queue or its saved messages will be discarded. A transition in one process can be executed at the same time as a transition in another process, provided that both processes run concurrently. If processes run sequentially, then their corresponding transitions are executed interleaving. In this case, the transitions are run to completion, that is, only one transition is executed at a time until it reaches the next state or stop. The actions that can be performed during a transition include timer manipulation, process creation, 
Procedure and Macro Call, Decision, Transition Option, Execution of SDL Code, and a Connector. A process can send messages to another based on the paths defined in the structure. If a single path exists in the structure for a given message, then its name and parameters are enough to address the receiver process. However, the receiver of a message can be set explicitly in the output symbol. This is useful when there are several possible paths for a given message. If the receiver is set explicitly, then a path must exist for the given message. A message can be sent to a named process, to a process identifier, to the environment or via a channel or a gate. The process identifier can be the sender of the message that triggered the current transition, the process that created the current process instance, a process instance created by the current process, or the process itself. Timers are identified by their name. They can be declared, however, their declaration is optional. The behavior in SDL is concerned with duration, that is, with the difference between timer values rather than values themselves. That is why the unit of time in SDL is irrelevant. A timer is started with this its expected timeout, and the now keyword can be used to get the current time. When a timer goes off, it becomes a message in the input queue and it will be treated as any normal message, that is, in first in, first out order. If, however, the timer is cancelled while the corresponding message is already in the queue, the message will be removed from the queue. In this example, the transition triggered by signal 2 will cancel the timer tick, which will be removed from the queue and its associated transition will not be executed. Process instances in SDL can be created either statically or dynamically. Static creation is done at system startup and the number of instances is set in the process symbol. Dynamic crea creation is done at runtime, that is, during the execution of a transition. In this case, one instance of a process is created. A procedure can be declared everywhere in the structure of a system, be it block or process. The declaration symbol has the name of the procedure, like procedure 1 in this example. Procedures are used to factorize behavior. That is, a behavioral pattern that repeats itself several times can be defined as a procedure, hence reducing the size and complexity of the model. Behavior in procedure is modeled using state machines like in processes. However, they have a different start symbol and unlike processes they return rather than stop. Also, procedures can accept parameters and return a value to the caller. The caller of a procedure can be either a process or another procedure. A call to a procedure will interrupt the execution of the current transition until the procedure returns. Procedures can send and receive messages and modify the data of their declaring agent. Another way to factorize behavior is with macros. Unlike procedures, macros cannot receive messages and thus no transition can be defined inside them. A macro is expanded when called, which is like replacing the call symbol by the contents of the macro. This is why a macro cannot call itself, as it would cause an infinite expansion. A composite state is a state composed of sub-state machines and it allows to model hierarchical state machines. Each sub-state machine handles a different subset of messages. The super state machine also handles its own inputs. When a message is for one of the substate machines, the super state does not change. But when a message is for the super state machine, all substate machines are terminated. In this example, the process will stay in state 1 until it receives signal 3. 
while in this state signal 1 and signal 2 are treated by its substate machines. SDL supports data types. A data type definition consists of a body, a set of literals and a set of operators. SDL provides several predefined data types, which are familiar in both their behavior and syntax. These range from simple types like integer to complex ones like arrays. It is also possible to use A's and 1 for data types. This way the structure and behavior of the system can be defined in SDL, while data types in A's and 1. A new data type can be defined also based on an existing one. In this example, the port number is a new data type, which is based on an integer. It is easy to define a new data type by introducing constraints and a default value to an existing type. For example, the lower and upper bound values for the port number can be limited as shown. SDL supports declaration of constants and variables based on predefined or user-defined data types. Constants are declared at any level, be it system, block, process or procedure, and their values cannot be changed. Variables, on the other hand, are declared inside a process or a procedure. They are visible and can be modified only inside that process or procedure. Global variables accessible by all processes are not supported. However, it is possible for a process to make visible its variables in other parts of the system. These are called remote variables and although they are visible in other processes, they cannot be modified by them. Data can be sent and received via message parameters and manipulated inside transitions. In this example, the process is waiting in state 1 for signal 1, whose only parameter is an integer. When the message is treated, its parameter will be copied to the variable named value. A decision is made based on whether the value is greater than 0. If it is, then the value is added to the sum, and the process does not leave its current state. The process will be waiting for other integers to add to the sum, until it receives a zero or negative value. In this case, it will send signal 2 with the computed sum as a parameter. The object-oriented concepts of SDL give the user additional tools for structuring and reuse. The concepts are based on classes and specialization provides a simple and intuitive way for creating new classes based on existing ones. Defining an agent class allows to use the same agent several times in the system. An agent class declaration, block or process includes the messages that come in and go out of that agent using gates. An instance of a class is represented with a dotted line, with the name of the instance and that of its class. When a class is instantiated, the gates are connected to the surrounding structure. The messages listed in the gates must be consistent with those listed in the connected channels. Specialization allows a block subclass to inherit the structure of its superclass. This includes agents, channels, gates, and messages. A process subclass inherits the behavior of its superclass, that is, its data and transitions. I will now make a demonstration of how to build and execute a simple SDL system. In this demo, I will model a ping-pong game using Pragmadev Studio, a modeling and testing tool. I will first create a new project. It will be, of course, an SDL project. I will save it and, while doing so, I will name it Ping Pong. An SDL model starts with the top-level agent, that is, the system. Let's create one by selecting the project 
and adding a new child element to it. The system is an element of the active architecture. I will create a file for it. Name it ping pong. Save it and add it to the project. We can now edit the contents of the system. So let's open it and do that. System contents will go inside the frame, while the outside of the frame is the environment. I will now place a text symbol and declare the messages needed in this example. Ping and Pong messages will be used by the players to play the game, while the Play message will be used to start the game. All messages have a single parameter. This is an integer value that will define for how long the game will go on. I will now start building the structure of the system by placing a block for each of the players. I will name the first block Ping Side and the second one Pong side. I will now connect the blocks with a channel which I will name Game Table. Ping and Pong messages will travel through this channel so let's put them at the endpoints of the channel. Ping message goes to the Pong side and Pong message to the Ping side. The game is started from the environment. I will now connect the ping side to the environment using another channel. I will name this one Game Start. The play message will go to the ping side using this channel. The system is complete. Let's save it. Now we need to define each of the blocks. I will start with the pink side. Everything should be in place, so let's go ahead and create the block. Block contents will go inside the frame. The outside of the frame is the surrounding of the block, that is, all the channels the block is connected to. I will place a process inside the block. Name it Pink Player and connect it to the surrounding using channels. The first channel will connect the ping player to the game table, so I will name this one ping table side. The second channel will connect ping player to game start, so I will name it play game. I will now connect the channels to the surrounding of the block. Let's start with Pink Table side and connect it to Game Table. Next is Play Game. Connect it to Game Start. Pink Player will receive the Play message from the Play Game channel and Pong message from the Pink Table side. It will also send the Pink message using this channel. The pink side is ready. Let's save it. Now the pong side. Let's get back to the system and create the block. Inside the block I will place a process and name it pong player. I will now use a channel to connect the process to the surrounding of the block. I will name it Pong Table Side. The Pong player will receive a ping message and send a Pong message. The channel will be connected to Game Table. The Pong side is ready. Let's save it. That's it for the structure of the system. Now it is time to define the behavior. 
Let's get back to the ping side and define the ping player. Everything should be in place, so let's create the process. At first, some declarations. To keep track of the duration of the game, I will declare a variable named counter and a timer named winner to decide for the winner of the game. Now I will define the start transition. For that, I will place a start symbol. There is nothing to do for the process during the start transition, so I will make the process go to a next state and name this one ready. Now I will define the ready state. While in this state the process will be waiting for the play message in order to start the game. So I will place an input symbol for this message. Notice that the parameter of the message will be copied in the counter variable. Let's check the value of the variable. For that I will need a decision symbol. For the process to start playing, this value should be greater than zero. If this is the case, then the process will send to the other player the ping message with the counter as a parameter and then start the timer, which is supposed to go off after one unit of time. The game has started, so I will make the process enter the playing state. However, if the value of counter is not greater than zero, then the process will stay in the ready state. I will now define the playing state. While playing, the timer can go off. In this case, the process is declared winner. The process can receive the pong message with the counter as a parameter. If so, it will decrement the counter and check if its value is still greater than zero. If that is the case, then it will send the ping message with the new value of counter. Set back the timer and continue playing. However, if the counter has reached zero, the process will lose the game. That's it for the pink player. Let's save it and close it. I will now define the behavior of the other player. Let's go to the punk side and create the process. Again, some declarations, a counter variable and the timer. Now the start transition. The punk player will not receive a play message. So the ready state and the playing state are the same. I will now place a state symbol with both states in it. The process can receive a ping message with the counter as a parameter. It will decrement the counter and check its value. If it's greater than zero, it will send the pong message and set the timer. And of course, it will continue playing. If the counter has reached zero, the process will lose the game. 
If the timer goes off while playing, then the process is the winner. The second player is also ready. Let's save it and close it. The system is now complete in both structure and behavior. Let's play some ping pong. I will now select my system and execute it. This will launch the SDL simulator. I will also open a trace. I will now execute the system step by step. Execution starts with a counter declaration of the pink player. The player then reaches the ready state. Then declaration for the punk player and again ready state. In the trace we can see that both players have reached the ready state. Execution cannot continue unless we send the play message to the pink player. So let's do that. Select the pink player, the play message and then its parameter. This will be the value of the counter. Let's set it to 5. Now we can send the message. We can see in both trace and model that the play message was received by the pink player. Let's continue with the game. The value of counter is checked and because it is greater than zero, the ping message will be sent. The timer is set and the ping player goes to the playing state. Execution continues with the pong player receiving the ping message. Decrementing the value of the counter and checking its new value. As the new value should be 4, it will continue by sending the pong message. It will then set the timer and go to the playing state. Notice in the trace that the parameter value for message pong is indeed 4. Let's run our system to completion, that is, until the game is finished. We can see in the trace that we have a loser and a winner of the game. Thank you for your attention. For more information on SDL, please visit our website pragmadev.com.